Hey, Indian Creek 8th grade students, it's Professor Blazek, and I'm here today to give you an introduction to stock markets in preparation for our upcoming stock market project. So let's begin by looking at what exactly a stock is. Now, each share of a stock is quite literally a piece of that company. You can think of each company like it is a building. Each share of that company is one brick that helps make up the building as a whole. As companies become more or less valuable over time, the bricks of its building get larger or smaller, just like the value of its stock can get higher or lower. Now, as you know, buildings are made up of a lot of bricks, and in the same way, companies have thousands or even millions or billions of shares of stock, depending on how valuable the company is. So let's look at an example. Let's say that you own 500 shares of T. Wolf Incorporated stock. Now, if there are 5 million total shares of T. Wolf Inc., your stock means that you own 0.01% of the company. Now, I realize this doesn't sound like very much, but let's say that T. Wolf Inc. is worth $50 million as a whole company. So if we take your 0.01% and multiply it by 50 million, your stock in the company is actually worth $5,000, which is quite a solid investment. Now you might be wondering, why do companies sell stock at all? So imagine that you are now the owner of T. Wolf Incorporated. You've started your business, you built it up strong over time, but you're looking for a new way to get cash flowing into your company. You may choose to begin offering stock. So you divide your company into small pieces and you sell those pieces or shares to investors. This would be like selling some of the bricks of your building. Now you offer some of those shares and investors can purchase them for a certain price. It's important to note that business owners will only sell part of their company to investors. They will never put up the whole company itself. This way they are still in control of the majority of the business. And selling stock is just a way to offer investors the chance to share in some of the company's profits. Now, as investors buy shares of the company, you are essentially selling a piece of the company off. Now, this might sound bad, like you're losing control of some of your business, but this also means that your company has extra cash to spend. You might choose to spend this new cash on new technologies or expanding your business to new places or products or by hiring more workers to make or sell your products. The goal of business owners is to always expand the value of a company with the money that's made from the sale of its stock. Now, since companies can use the money from selling stocks to expand, the value of the company may rise with the sale of its stock. This means that companies can earn money for both themselves and their stockholders. So now let's look at why you would want to buy stock. So since a share of stock is a piece of a company, owning stock means that you can directly profit from a company's growth or success. If you buy stock in a company that does well, your initial investment will grow over time. Going back to our first example, as a company becomes more or less valuable, the bricks that make up its building may get bigger or smaller. So let's go back to your 500 shares of T. Wolf Incorporated stock. Let's say you purchase those shares for $10 each. 500 shares times $10 per share means that your investment was originally worth $5,000. Now let's say that T. Wolf Inc. took your money and the rest of the money from its stock sales and it decides to build a second building and it puts money into designing a new line of products for consumers to buy. Now with its expansion, T. Wolf Inc. can now sell its products to twice as many people across the country. Plus, the new products it designed are big sellers with consumers, so sales begin to rise as well. Thanks to these improvements, the company's value rises from $50 million to $75 million in one year. Now with the company's rise in value, each share of T. Wolf Inc. is now worth $15. This means that your 500 shares are now worth $7,500. You could now sell your shares for a profit because you have made a smart investment. 
Now, as an added bonus, some companies will actually pay you money simply because you own their stock. This is what it's called a dividend. Think of a dividend like a building paying rent to the owners of its bricks because those owners helped construct the building and keep it running. Now, as a side note, companies that pay dividends are typically larger, more established companies, and not every company offers a dividend to its stockholders. Now, a company may pay a dividend because it wants to prevent stockholders from selling once a profit is made. Otherwise, once a company's stock rises, many shareholders may sell their stocks for a profit, which means the company has to then pay out money. This can prevent future growth and hurt the company's stock price, just like what happened to so many companies during the stock market crash of 1929. Companies may also pay a dividend simply as a reward or a thank you to its stockholders for helping contribute to the business's success. Now keep in mind that dividends are usually very small amounts of money, but they can add up over time. So let's say T-Wolf Inc. decides to begin paying a dividend. The owners of the company decide that each share will receive a 10 cent dividend four times per year. Most companies will pay dividends multiple times throughout each year. Now this means that each share of T-Wolf Inc. will earn 40 cents per year so your 500 shares will earn you $200 per year just because you own the stock. Now keep in mind that the goal when investing in a stock is always to buy low and sell high, but sometimes owning shares in a company that pays dividends can be a long-term money-making strategy for investors who are looking for steady growth. If you think back to our example, if you make $200 per year in T-Wolf Inc. dividends, then if you hold the stock for 20 years, you will make $4,000 just in dividends alone, almost equal to the value of your original investment. Now, obviously, another action that you can take in the stock market is to sell your stocks. Now, after you've bought a stock, you should obviously pay attention to its value and how you think the company and its stock will perform into the future. If the stock's value has gone up, and you feel that the company and the stock will continue to rise, you should likely hold that stock or even invest more money into it. However, if you feel the stock cannot go any higher, you may want to sell it now before the price drops. For example, after a company releases a new product, its stock might surge because investors get really excited about it. However, that excitement might fade if the company doesn't continue to expand or if the product isn't as great as everybody thought it would be. This would be a time to sell when the stock is high. Now, let's say you buy a stock and the value goes down. If you think the stock will bounce back over time, you will want to hold that stock and just wait for the price to go up. However, if you begin to feel that your investment was bad, there are issues with the company's products or its business choices are not good, you may want to sell your stock now. Now, this means that you will lose some money, but at least you are selling the stock before the price continues to go down. Now, people will sell stocks for a number of different reasons. If you're only looking for a short-term investment and you've made some money, you may choose to sell the stock and enjoy the profit. You may also, as we discussed before, feel that a company is overvalued and the stock price is inflated. In this case, you will want to sell before the stock price drops down again. Or if a stock's price has dropped, you may want to cut your losses and sell in order to prevent losing even more money if the price continues to go down. Now, always keep in mind that most stock prices will fluctuate or go up and down over time. It's very rare to see a company consistently rise in value every week or every month. Your goal as an investor should always be to buy stock when the price is the lowest it will be moving forward and to sell when the price of a stock is at its highest. So for a brief review on stocks, there are literally thousands of companies that you can buy shares of stock in. Think about the ones you believe will improve and grow into the future. This could be a well-established company that will continue to be a force in its industry, or maybe a new and up-and-coming company that you think will find its place in the economy. Now, as I said before, watch stock prices once you buy. 
Most stocks will go up and down over time, but once you see a trend, you can use this knowledge to your advantage. Just like all companies are different, stocks are going to act very differently as well. Stocks of more established companies will usually rise or fall less drastically and are more of a long-term investment, especially if they offer any sort of dividend. Newer companies or those in less established industries may see greater changes in their stock price in the short term. You should always try to balance your purchases to minimize your risk. If you're looking for quick profits, newer companies may offer that chance. But if you only invest in riskier stocks, you may see your accounts drop very quickly as well. And finally, when it comes to investing, you may make a bad choice. Do not let your pride or emotion get in the way of making smart decisions with your money. If you invest in a company that begins to do poorly, it may be better to sell and cut your losses than to stick with a stock that is only going to decrease in value. So I hope that you now have a basic understanding of how stocks work. So let's take that knowledge and see if you can go get yourself some money. Until next time, this is Professor Blazek signing off.